What's up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. And in today's video, we'll be tackling one of the, the topics we get asked the most here at Burnt, and it's all about business. We'd love to give back to, to you guys and hopefully provide you guys with some insights on how we did it and tips and tricks how you can do it. And hopefully we can either inspire or just uh, give you guys some idea of how to start a business and to build the, the future of this amazing country. So let's get into it. First question, where did you get the idea to start Burnt? Um, so basically, as long as we and I have, I have known each other, we knew that we were going to do something together. I actually found a message from like 2016 or something where we said like we're going to start a business and everything. Um, but the time was right where we just felt ready to start our own thing. And then we basically started Burnt out of the need that we saw for active wear that is both extremely high quality and functional and then has that fashionable element because we've seen you know yeah from from my point of view both of us love fitness all aspects of it but also fashion so we wanted to start a brand that combines the two where you can go on on a saturday for a marathon run um, and the product will be functional enough to do that and uh, you can put, wear it on a night out on the weekend um, in a social setting and it'll be 100% normal and, and look sick where with most other brands it's either performance or it's lifestyle we wanted to blend the two. Second question how do you find good suppliers? Sure the biggest tip I can say is try and try and try with so many different suppliers so it doesn't matter what industry you go into um, I would recommend not finding one person or one supplier and then just Coding with them. I we think probably did 50, many, over 50. Um, when we started off, I promise you guys, we probably sampled from over 50 companies, and uh, some was a hit, some was a miss. <laughs> the best, your best friend is Google. Hop onto Google, start sort, um, searching for suppliers in whatever industry it is that you want to start your business. Ask and around in the industry. Yeah, you'll for be people surprised. You'll, know. you'll be surprised at how many people. Um, are willing to share a lot of contacts so like if one supplier doesn't necessarily meet your need you can say listen i'm looking for this and this and this specific thing and they'll most likely refer you to someone who will be able to assist mm. you and to help you but take some time invest in your samples that's one big thing it's expensive i think that's something a lot of people don't realize sampling is expensive process especially if you're going to work with top-end suppliers so that is the best investment you'll ever make go through that process pay those school fees and get proper samples <laughs> and a lot of them. And don't be discouraged by the first one you get if it's not understanded. I can promise you, we, we had our hands in our hair for a lot of times, but yeah, it paid off in the end. And at the end of the day, you'll know when you find the right one. Next one is, where do you source your packaging? We've got a lot of questions on the packaging. Uh, I see a lot of people love it. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite unique and it's also very practical to use. The packaging is difficult if you're just starting off to do that type of customization that we do. Um, we have to order it in very large quantities. So it's, I'm talking tens of thousands at a time. When you start off, just do something that is authentic, something that's true to yourself and true to your brand. And it doesn't have to be crazy expensive. We started off with a, like a basic, like a Ziploc bag and we printed branded stickers. Um, to be able to give you that branded experience. But when we first started out, we didn't have the quantities to be able to order 10,000 10, at a time. Exactly. Next one up is, how do I become a burnt sponsored partner? Yeah, so this is very exciting. Um, we hand select all of our partners. We go through a long process where we first kind of like, you know, see what a person is like. Um, we get them for coffee and have a chat and see if our brands align basically because it is a, a exactly. brand alignment partnership. And we divide into two categories. We have brand partners and athletes. Partners are people that are influential in the community that we buy into their way, their way of doing, doing things um, and their way of inspiring their specific target market. Then we have our athletes on the other side which is very sport specific, top trail runners, people that are beasts in the gym people that are swimmers, triathletes. So we split those two up. But the best advice I can give to anyone wanting to become a burnt partner is don't just reach out to brands um, 
and tell them that you want to be sponsored. Show them why you have to be sponsored, either by the type of content you create, maybe buy from the brand and uh, create content with their product to show them what it is that you can offer. Yeah. I think most of our partners we've found through our tag posts. Um, it's people that we keep on seeing on our tag posts and then we absolutely love the content and then we reach out to them. How's it running a business with your partner? Lacquer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, we, we're kind of like so used to it now, we've been doing it for years, but um, I think one of the big advantages that we have is that our skill set is very different, so complementary. Um, initially, when we started, it was just the two of us doing everything, so both of us literally jumped into all the different departments and did literally everything and you know we it wasn't just a nine to five that we but did that's exactly that job, Andrana, you guys wanting to do business with your partners make sure there is very clear defined mandates and roles where Andrana focuses more on the creative side design wise and I focus more on the business side and, and building the brand out and uh, obviously we bounce ideas off each other we have the same office so we, we can talk constantly share ideas and thoughts and uh, value each other's opinions yeah. so we always work very very good together and i, think I don't see big, it changing yeah. <laughs> um <clears throat> excuse me so i think the big thing is um initially it was you know just all hands on deck all the time but then we realized that we need to have a certain end to the day so um, you know, working hours is working hours, so we'll tend to speak about business only in that time. It's only when, you know, when you get home and you normally like chat to your partner about whatever happened to your day, but it's not remember to send this invoice or did you make this payment. Um, it's more like dreaming about the future and things like that. So that will definitely do after hours on weekends when we kind of like excited and inspired about what we're doing and then we'll chat after hours. But business wise, to do lists, stick to business hours, definitely. Exactly. And even if one partner is more inclined on the business side, you have to know your, your other partner, your, your other partner. You have to know uh, how your partner functions and what's triggers for those, that person. So I, I, I know now, don't talk to Andriana about invoicing or, or rent <laughs> or something at nine, at nine at night. I'm, um, I can think of those things on my own, make my own notes on my phone, but don't chat to her about that. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is, how should I calculate price points for my new business? So pricing is very important in business and hopefully I can share a bit of insight on how to do it. I would firstly go on and tier the business that you're starting. Are you going ultra luxury? Are you doing premium? Are you doing something in the middle? Or do you like doing low end, high volume um, product? When it comes to that pricing, you just, you have to realize that if you want to play in the premium or luxury space you're probably going to deal with expensive suppliers it is expensive to manufacture these products so you can't contradict um, quality with price points it's a it's something that's that you have to calculate very specifically and you need to make sure that you factor in all costs um, when you calculate your gross margin so you need to know your cost from your supplier then you need to know your duties if you're importing, your VAT on that cost. You need to know the cost of packaging, tags, barcoding, um, everything that goes into getting that product to your doorstep or to your warehouse. What is your landed cost? That is the most important thing to work out. And then you can decide how aggressive you want to be with your margins on top of that. I would say don't, don't be crazy with it. Be fair. and. Uh, Rather under uh, under promise and over deliver with your product. Yeah. Bearing in mind also costs like um, things that you don't necessarily think about, like your website costs, um, mm. what payment gateways, the percentage that they take, um, obviously your overheads, all of that play factors. So it's just you know you deciding on where you want to um, position yourself and making sure that you're factored in all the different costs to make sure that you've got a company that you can grow with. Exactly. And the last thing for everyone living in South Africa, remember the rand is very. Really uh, volatile, so just keep that into account when you're doing your pricing. Will you be doing tennis wear in the future? No, never say never. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that we um, create products that we absolutely use, love, and um, have a need for. So I think I'll our stop golf range, <laughs> our golf tennis range is, is is a lot of people are wearing that for tennis, but I love tennis, so yeah. I might force you to do something for us. Yeah, yeah, at what moment did you realize that you built a very popular brand? 
<laughs> well, um, I think let, the, let, me, let me start by saying yeah. it wasn't until almost a second year that we saw the first actual person wearing our product out and about on their daily. Yeah, that's just what I wanted lives. to mention. Like that was my first pinch me moment. Was I? Um, it was in, it was in Cape Town. It was in Cape Town in the CBD. Yes. A girl was running into the Capitec there around Parliament Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we saw it then like quickly and we freaked out and the girl, both of us like, be okay. And then, um, you know, maybe a month or so later, I saw someone on the prom jogging and <laughs> I remember I'm actually quite shy. And I went up to this girl and I'm like, I stopped her and then I didn't know what to say at all. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm like, uh, um, uh, you know, th this is, um, you know my brand and everything and it that was a big pinch me moment but yeah how can we uh, it's a difficult thing to answer it's very difficult because in retail like you don't i don't think there's a point where you can put a, a peg in the sand or draw a line in the sand saying i've now made it it's constantly evolving you're constantly growing either your business you're growing your team um, and trying to get to that next level so we see the brand a lot more these days. Initially, only our friends saw it all over the place. Uh, we never saw it until the second year, and then it just kind of blew up. Uh, definitely around uh, 2021, start of 2021, is when it picked up tremendously. Um, I think a lot of people then bought the product, and the word started to spread about the quality um, and the designs, and yes, from there, we opened a few stores, and it grew exponentially. I think, um what we need to do more often is have a think back to you know where we were last year at this time and normally when we do that um, you know that it kind of hits us and how things how things could change in a year and where if we compare to where we are now compared to where we started um, it's a bit different so that's a very 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 good we point we need to celebrate more often <laughs> no 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 it's not that it's we do but celebrate it's, but it's you need to take time to look back and reflect on the past and the retail can be push, push, push in the entire time. So make time for it and celebrate the, the small victories. What portion of your income comes from your social media? Love your Instagram page. Very cool. So I wouldn't classify it as a portion of income. So how I see it is there is different drivers or or channels that push people to your landing page or your service, whatever it is you're selling. Our Instagram is a big one of our big drivers of um, uh, customers to our website, ultimately. So we don't necessarily make money out of our Instagram specifically, but our Instagram serves as a tool to get people to our websites. And when you're starting a business, you can, uh, you can do social media. TikTok is massive at the moment. People are building big brands on their uh, LinkedIn. If you're doing a more corporate business or finances or some sort of a service business, it could be anything. It could be handing out pamphlets at the robots. Any way to get your target market to the product that you're selling or the service that you're selling. Yeah, we're almost seeing it as a you know a ever-changing billboard in a way. That's the one platform where we can showcase our brand in a nutshell or in a first glance so someone can come onto our instagram page and immediately see you know our brand image what we are about they've they so it's such an easy way for us to communicate what we're about what we have what our intentions are and not to sell too hard especially if you're using social media social media no one wants to see ads ad like content uh, when they follow a beautiful feed it should be organic it should be how to style the product, how the product looks on, it, on different people. Bringing value to a customer, that's that's the big thing that we've seen is, you know, you can go different ways with your post. It could be informative, you know, in terms of, you know, fabric or fit or color or something, or it can be inspirational, you know, getting people out there to move and improve themselves, or it could be something funny or informative or, yeah, so exactly. there's different things. So for, us, it's, so for us, that's how it functions, how it works. But if you, let's say you start a car wash and you're handing out <laughs> pamphlets at the robot, then I want to see yeah. car wash costs this much. We're open on these dates. If you buy six car washes in advance, you get two for free. Yeah. Then it can be, you need to tweak it to the industry that you're in. Yeah. Next one, how do I raise funding for my business in South Africa? Yeah, Interesting so one. We didn't raise funding. 
No. Let's start off with that. We we um, actually we worked for a year and a bit abroad, um, and saved our money. So we started burnt out of our savings. Yes. Out of our savings. But I get this question a lot on my Instagram as well: is how do you get funding, either private equity or bank? And my number one tip with this is if you just starting a business don't go looking for funding right away use what you have and do what you can at first if you need to downscale that massive idea that app that you want to build do that start off small first test the market with the mvp a minimal minimum viable product to see if this idea there's actually demand for this idea and to be quite frank with you guys is no bank is going to lend money on the basis of an idea no private investor will do that unless it's your very close family member they might they might back you but just tone it down a bit uh, take what you have maybe work on the side a little bit build up a little bit of money a little bit of savings and then start with that reinvest your profits back into the business constantly and then when you get to a point where it's no longer feasible just to grow with that so your growth is too big then you can start looking at outside investments but for burnt we haven't taken on any external or real external financing we don't have any external investors and uh, yeah, we kept on trying to keep it within our means and grow it that way. The number one undervalued tip to succeed in business. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to mention something that almost ties back to what you just said. Um, you actually said it. It's um, if you if you're not a little bit embarrassed about the first product that you've launched, you've waited too long. Um, you need to go ahead and put that product or that service into the market. The only way that you're going to learn about what people need and want and how to improve your product or service is by actually putting it out there. You can have an idea or work on it internally for, for you know, however long, um, but you need to put it out there. Exactly. That's a, that's a very good advice. People are often scared to start something. doesn't matter what industry it is in. Get it out there, ask your friends or speak to your friends and family about it. No one's going to steal your idea. Those days are, or that thinking is, is gone. Um, but my tip of it, or my advice is, or undervalued piece of advice would be to be consistently good day in and day out. Because how I see it is there's no greater return um, than the compounding interest on consistency. If you just show up every single day, you do the best that you can do, and there's no very high points and very low points. You're just consistently chipping away, chipping away each and every day. You'll eventually get there. How did you know where to start? We just, we just started. started. <laughs> um, we had an idea. We were excited about the idea. And then, I mean, you started with a blank page. And then whatever you think about, or let me say what we did, whatever we thought about, we started writing down. We just started writing down and exploring and researching and, you know, doing everything that we could. And the more you think about it, the more you put those things out on paper, the more you start to form this bigger idea and you actually start to, you know, get a bit of a, a direction of where you need to go and what you need to work on. It's literally just starting putting that thing to paper. I would uh, strongly suggest you sort out your basics out of the gate right away. Register your business. Uh, at CIPC. Register a business bank account. Don't do it through your personal bank yeah. account. Trademark your brand or your product or your but a service business. Trademark your name and check if the trademark is actually available. Lay the foundation. So do all of those things. Know what software you're going to use for your website. Know what software you're going to use for stock management. Get those things right. Look for a supplier. Find a great supplier and then everything will start jutting together. How many partners do you have in the business? If you're referring to business partners, it's just myself and Adriana, who are the, the founders and the owners of the brand. We don't have any external um, external partners, but we've got an incredible team that we work with. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're so proud of our team. We built out a group of exceptional people over the past few yeah, years. I mm. Yeah, like a winter. Next question, we want to open our first store. I have no idea where to start. Stock control, international shipping, is it worth it? How do I get rates? So maybe let's split this in two. I'll answer the first part, you handle the second part. Okay, okay. 
So opening a new store, I think we'll probably have to do a, a proper video about opening a store. I get this question a lot as well. It's a, it's a, <laughs> a lot it's of a, things going to, yeah, I of fun. Yeah. I just make sure that we've got products to put into the store. It's yes. complicated. If you want to go into physical retail, I'll, I can be honest with you guys, it's, it's, it's complicated. First thing there is I'm going to run through it very briefly. You need to reach out to the landlords in the areas that you want to open up. Are you going mall? Are you going um, high street? Where is it that you want to open a store? Then you're going to ask them for an offer letter and they're going to give you their rates, uh, what it costs. You need to get a proper lawyer or someone that knows about these things to vet that letter or that offer for you. And ultimately that will lead to a lease once you guys have agreed upon um, set uh, parameters for basic rent. There's turnover rent, marketing fund contributions, ops cost, all of those things. It's a lot of things that we never knew about. No, you learn those things. That's a, yeah. that's a beautiful entrepreneurship. You, you don't get taught, taught that at school, you, you go figure it out. But then just on stock control in a store, it is vitally important. Yeah. Your stock and your warehousing, or wherever you're sending that stock from is the engine of your business. So you need to make sure that you manage that exceptionally yeah. well. It does take a bit of um, time to figure out exactly what it is, but you need to be able to adapt quickly. Um, you don't want to sit with too much stock. Um, it's expensive in itself just to keep stock in the in the stores and it's difficult to manage but also you don't want to have not enough stock and have people come in and you know not have what they want but yeah so that's quite difficult but invest manage. in a quality wms like a warehouse management system or stock control system it's it's definitely worth it to pay to pay good money for that it's a vital part of any business yeah it gives you that peace of mind that what you're ordering and, everything and then they're great. asking um, international shipping should we offer it is it worth it how do i get rates yeah well it depends on where you're, like if you've got international customers if you do and you know the need is there um a lot of the international shipping companies are incredible in the way that they plug into your different websites we use we use dhl they yeah. plug into our website we send a lot of packages abroad and it works exceptionally well yeah, so i mean if you go to the the big players basically dhl aramex fedex um just have a chat with them, have a meeting with them, see what their rates and everything are. Um, normally they can have a plugin into your website to have responsive rates so that it depends on where your customer orders from to give them different rates. But literally set up that meeting and see if it's viable for you. How did you go about testing your initial product? Well, when we finally got the supplier that we went for, I remember putting on the pair of tights, we were um, on a farm still, and I was like jumping up and down because I was so excited about this pair of tights just fitting incredible. Um, you need to pull a full half marathon right I, after that? Yeah, and I ran, it was my first half marathon actually, mm. that I ran um, in a pair of, like a first pair of, of <laughs> sample tights, and um, yeah, we just we just made sure that we moved in it, and I remember we tested you, that product. I, I remember my washing cycle. I spent I think I spent <laughs> a day in the in the uh, what do you call it? Washing, your, like washing, washing room. room. I washed that pair of tights eight times, dry cleaned it eight times, washed it again. It was crazy just and to test and make sure everything the, is perfect. Because we only started with women's wear, it was you know I had to physically wear the product to good wear it. So yeah, yeah, I remember one day he had me go for a run in the morning, like a ten k run in the morning, and just like high summer in the bush fields of this bottom. and. I wasn't allowed to take it off for the, for the rest of the day so yes. that we could feel what it dries like on your skin. Does it stay comfortable? Does it start to smell? You know, all these different things. Um, we, we put in the time, <laughs> we put in the sweat to make sure that we've got an incredible product that we are excited about and that we are proud to sell. Exactly. Come do a talk at our college. We need more people like you to explain business. Thank you. Thank you firstly very much for that. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. We actually did a talk the other day at Stellenbosch University. So yes, let your lecturer hit us up. I'm more than welcome to share my experiences with the younger generation of South Africa and share my knowledge of what I have. So yeah, hit us up. As a kid, when I grew up, I wanted to be. Um, I can tell you what I wanted to be. Yeah, I wanted to be a private investigator for the police. Oof. I would still like that. I think I wanted to be something random. I wanted to be like a horse riding teacher or something like that. I was obsessed with horses. I was a horse girl. <laughs> Never trust a horse girl. <laughs> okay, next one. How do you know which sizes to stock the most of when starting out? Uh, well, when starting out, um, 
you know, we just kind of like did a regular size curve, you know, less extra smalls, like more smalls, mediums, less larges, extra larges. Um, and then from there on, you can go on the sales data, like your previous sales data. We look at that all the time to make sure that we order the correct sizes for. You can look at you can look at international trends. Go into Google, search what is the size goes and sell the most. For women, it's generally small, medium, large. For guys, it's normally medium, large, XL, and then build it around there. But we've had waves of products and sometimes extra small sells exceptionally well sometimes double xl sub sell exceptionally well so it changes and evolves but you can never go wrong with uh, your basics uh, that you can find anywhere online next one tips to manage hr as a small business this is a very important one That's a good question. when it's a very small business i don't think it's such a big deal because it's, it's just you but <laughs> What's so cool? yeah HR. i wanted to complain about you a few times <laughs> I <HR>. need to <laughs> No, it's uh, HR is very important and uh, what I can suggest is firstly you as a, the owner or the manager, you will be the HR initially for a long time. For a long time. It's, uh, having an external HR agency or getting someone into your company doing HR specifically is uh, it's not something most businesses can afford at the start. So you need to learn how to understand people, how to listen to people, how to give uh, constructive criticism. Uh, that doesn't come over too hard but they're still firm and, and fair at the end of the day so you and, need to you need to learn those ropes you need to do your research as well but um you're the person that will be you know negotiating salaries and you know giving bonuses and raises mm. and things like that so and approving leave days and you need to research that you know that you're being fair and you're being yeah. um, good to your employees exactly and i think it's very important one tip i can give in terms of hr it's it's important to be consistent with whatever you do, that you're not fluctuating one day, you're up here, next day you're shouting at your employees. They, they value that. If you can be consistent and speak in the same way or give the same type of info on a regular basis. If it comes to a point where your company grows a lot, then you can either look at those two options, get someone internally or have outsourced HR. And uh, it's, a, it's a very important part of, of any business. So you'll know when it's time to get get someone in to help you with that. Do you plan on opening a store internationally? I live in Amsterdam and get so many questions about Bert. Mm, like um, well. You can't say too much about that just yet, but. Uh, but you won't struggle, <laughs> you won't struggle for a long time. Yeah, let's, let's answer that later. Yeah. Next question. Do you use the same supplier for all your products? No. No, so we basically um, find the supplier that can do that specific product the best. So we've got a, well, a way, like that? A, a wide, way, range. Wide, wide, wide range. Wide range of... Wide range? Yeah. Range of different suppliers. suppliers yeah. Wow. <laughs> Spit it out. It goes so old. <laughs> <laughs> no, so normally you'll start with a specific product. I wouldn't suggest you start too broad and just try everything from the beginning. Start with one set of products, find a great supplier and then most suppliers are very open to share some of their contacts even with you because they're focusing on something very specific. The supplier is a specialist in sports bras and tights. They suggest if you want to do socks and caps, go to the supplier. What are three things to consider when starting a business? Firstly, determine your why. Why are you starting this business? Do you want to make a bit of extra money on the side or you truly want to build an exceptional exceptional um, system of delivery, a massive a massive brand or massive business or at the end of the day. That, is there something that you feel um, that you've thing. been missing yeah. in your life that's basically where we started, we, we felt a personal need for something and we wanted to create that? So you need to be very sure about that. Why are you doing what you're doing? Otherwise, you'll be scrambling around, you'll be confused all the time and your customer will ultimately be confused of what is, what is it that this product or service is offering. Next one is, I would say, is your brand identity. You need to develop a very specific brand identity that you stand for. What is your look and feel? How do you want the brand to be perceived? Build that out. It is exceptional, um, important thing um, in business. And the better you nail it at the beginning, the easier scaling it up will be. And then lastly, cash flow. I think it's important for everyone starting a business, no matter what it is, to understand cash flow. It's something that's not that doesn't get taught at school or university nearly enough cash flow is uh, 
is vitally important and understanding exactly how your cash flow runs in a, in a yearly cycle is, is crucial. Next question, how do you guys innovate constantly? Um, you know, I always joke and say we only make the things that we want or we make all the things that we want. So, you know, Pierre wanted golfware, so we made golfware. Um, no, but in all honesty, um, we just get so excited with all the possibilities and all the things that we um, absolutely love. And in within our team, I think there's a constant energy, like there's this buzzing all the, all the time, like no one feels that their idea is, you know, not worthy or um, anything like that. So we keep on just brainstorming and even if we come up with the wildest ideas, those ideas normally make it to, um, you know. Exactly. That's a good yeah. Come to fruition, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's true. Like we make the products that we ourselves feel there's a, a need for and the products that we want, that we love. But also saying that I feel that we understand the, the fitness space very well because we do all the sports that you can think of and the fashion industry. We, I would love to say that we are, understand fashion quite well. So we look at the trends internationally, but very important for me and I know Fandrana as well is we want to set the trends here in South Africa. We want to be the brand that people, that other people copy. Like we will drive the innovation in our space as much as we possibly can. Yeah, and just with that, I think um, even if you've got an idea that you feel is a little bit out there, go for it, try that sample. Um, you know, that's what we keep on doing. This, you know, the only way that you can grow and the only way that you can develop and push the boundaries if you are willing to put that a little bit of a, you know, a, a out there idea on the line and just give it a try. Exactly. Next question. When did you hire a designer? Did you design the items yourself at the start? Yes. So, Shanna um, is our apparel designer now and she's been with us just over a year. So, until last year, April, I designed everything myself with the help of Pia's creative vision. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, I basically am the creative director of the brand and, you know, Shanna and I work together um, quite closely, but she physically draws the designs. Do you think starting a fashion brand in 2023 is a good idea? Okay, interesting one. A fashion brand is exceptional. It is a, a very fun business to start, but in saying that, it is, it's difficult. Retail is not most people's friends. To be 100% honest with all of you guys watching, uh, fashion and retail is, is difficult. So you need to know and understand what you're getting yourself into. The main thing with it is, it's constant. It doesn't end. The seasons come and they go. The second big thing is is cash flow and, and funding and the finances behind it because there's such long lead time. So if you're starting with very little money or very small, it's going to be difficult to break into the market. It's going to take years. There's no overnight success businesses in fashion. It took us five years to get to the point where we are today. And uh, that's normally like the bare minimum. Um, in terms of scaling up a fashion brand. So you, you need to know that you're getting in it, into it for, for the long run. It is, it's super fun. It is a great yeah. industry to be in. I absolutely love it. I'm your honor does as well. So yes, I think it's a good idea if you, if you really love it, but just know of, of all of the things that comes with it. And don't write off normal business ideas as well. It's not in this social media um, space that everyone can see and it looks cool. What other industries do you think there's potential in to start a business? Yes, I love to hear this. This builds on my previous my previous answer about the fashion business, but there's loads of opportunity in South Africa. Yes, our economy is difficult at times, our rent fluctuates around, but our country and especially the younger generation is, is hungry to build out the future of this country and opportunity is everywhere. As I said earlier, it doesn't have to be the most glamorous business all the time that you, you look at starting. If you look back at where you grew up in your community, often the most uh, wealthy guys there was not the guys that owned the fashion brand. It was people that have four car washes, the guy that has two uh, auto works shops, the lady who has two hair salons or three hair salons. I mean, sometimes the best ideas or people are so busy trying to think outside of the box that they're missing all the good ideas inside of the box. So yeah, it's a, uh, 
I think choose what you love and something that you are excited about. Um, if you are not into auto works, don't start an auto works business. It's going to be difficult. Because <laughs> you're not going to be passionate about it. Um, yeah. So honestly, if you're thinking of different industries, choose you know four or five things that you absolutely love and enjoy, and explore those options. It's not about you know doing what you love and you won't work a day in your life because you will work, mm -hmm. but you will enjoy that work. Exactly. So choose something. And like one that thing to never love. write off is a lot of people talk about the product and service-based businesses. If you don't have a lot of money to start off with service-based business might be where it's at for you. How do you start hiring people for your business and when? Well, it was it was a big decision for us to get someone on board, but basically we couldn't get to um, all our tasks throughout the day and we needed an extra hand so that we are able to grow. Um, you know, those things that wasn't necessarily crucial for either myself or Pierre to do, we needed to be able to hand that over to someone else. And there's always someone better, more specialized in the field than you are. If you if you think you can do everything yourself, then you're delusional. There is people that can do things better than you. So you'll know when you reach that point where you just can't manage anymore. It is going to be a scary and very stressful decision to hire those first few employees. But it is absolutely necessary in order to build a proper business and not just be self-employed or work for yourself as a one-man show for forever. Yeah, we honestly wouldn't take your time. Take your time to find these people. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go <laughs> for it, Um I just wanted to say that we honestly wouldn't be where we are today if we didn't hire certain people at certain times. So, like we said, um, the people that we got into our business really elevated us. You know, they are masters in their field. They come with great fresh ideas and bring a lot of energy to the team um, besides the fact that you know we then have our hands loose to do what we are best at exactly mm -hmm. i struggle with accounting and stock control any tips accounting is maybe one of the most important things in in any business doesn't matter what you start so my five cents on this topic get an external accountant from the beginning at the beginning, someone also looks after your compliance. Exactly. You need to get someone to, to file those VAT and tax returns for you, uh, someone to make sure that you're compliant, and someone to run, to uh, manage your books. Unless an accountant for visual business. Yeah, <laughs> then you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> then you need to know what you're doing. But if you don't start, if you're not starting an accounting firm, get an external accountant in, just at least to help. Um, on a monthly basis or quarterly basis or whatever. In terms of stock control, invest in the best stock systems that you can afford. Or if you can't afford something, get Excel. Excel Ooh. and count your stock on a regular basis. Yeah. How do you predict trends and make them? Well, predicting trends, um, I think there's a lot of like gut feeling that goes into it as well. Um, we obviously look at the international market and do a lot of research in terms of what what's out there, what's been tried, like tried, um, and then you can. I think you've you've kind of like got it inside of you if to see if it's a trend that will last a while or if it's just like a month long fad. Um, yeah, there's a big difference between tre trends and fads. Yeah. So. Be wary of, of the fad, something that's just in, in style for a month. You want something that lasts a bit longer. Yes, yeah. there's seasonal trends that come by, but as I said, some people are just inclined to look out for that and to know like what is the next phase of a specific product or service or... Yeah. Next question. What is a good field of study to become a business person? There's not a good field of study for that. I mean, you can study become business science like the two of us did. But that doesn't mean you can't start a business if you study anything else, basically. You'll, after university, you'll quickly find out what you, you're passionate about. And if you don't find it in the first couple of years, don't worry, it'll come eventually. You'll, you'll learn um, about what you don't like and maybe that way you find what you like. So I don't think there's a specific field. Bcom will teach you a lot of the principles of business, but it doesn't get into the nitty gritty of running a business. What I would say also is if you feel that you, you know, you don't necessarily feel that you've got that like business spirit or like business, like grasp on business, get yourself a co-founder. Um, I mean, we're married now, but I mean, if I started Burnt on my own, I wouldn't have been able to do this because I didn't have that like business sense that Pia does. So 
Pia being the co-founder at Burns having that business sense, the two of us together could elevate this business. But yeah, so Good get yourself the co-founder. Any business, I would never do, or never, I would very rarely do any business uh, ventures without a co-founder. It is an absolute must, I feel. Then the last question we have here, I'm almost done with my studies. Do you think I should start a business or should I start working in nine to five first? Interesting one. There's no right or wrong answer in this. The first thing I just want to touch on quickly is I think entrepreneurship has been glorified a lot over the past few years. Everyone talking about starting his own business left, right and center, which is awesome. That is great. That's what the economy needs. It's, 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 it's proper. That said, there's nothing wrong with having a solid nine to five job. There's a lot more job security. You know how you're going to grow. Um, you don't have to stress about finances and HR. I mean, you can absolutely love your job. Exactly. As a five. So just that, just putting that out there. So there's not a it's, one is not better than the other. But I think it's it's normally good straight out of university or straight out of school to maybe go work a few years, because that's kind of most of the time how I see it is where people find the gaps in the market. So you don't know what is missing out there unless you work in a specific specific field and find those gaps there so I, that's my two cents on the on the topic i'm not sure how you feel about it also if you are like on that tipping point where you think you know i'm in a nine to five now or like i've got this great idea should i do it should i not do it when you're like nice and young where we are like in our life you've got relatively low risk if something god forbid goes wrong it is still recoverable so um, take that risk you know it, the high risk high reward Exactly. If you get into entrepreneurship or business specifically at that at such a young age, just make sure that you as a personality type can handle that load of stress um, of all the things that we mentioned earlier. Great. This is Laka. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope uh, we could uh, give you guys a bit of insights. Yeah. It was fun answering these questions. I think we should do it again or more often. <laughs> Definitely. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel. We've got lack of things coming this year. And yeah, leave them some comments in the video. Ugh, comments in the comments below. Com mm. Comments in the comments box, box below. below. If you've got some more questions, and we'll just answer them in the comments for you. Yeah, if you guys have suggestions for other video topics that we should uh, dive a bit deeper into, drop them in the comments, comments box. <laughs> comment, comment, box comment box below. below. Cheers. See you guys next time. Lucky!